hours a day, a week. Hi guys. Today we are going to talk about the rigging and how important is rigging. But uh, let me tell you something. The people never pay attention to the rigging. Oh, it's, it's working, the cable is working, oh, the light is, is on. Yeah, Bobby, the light is on, but check out the cables. Where, you, where is the ground? Oh, the ground is on the bonding. But the light is on. Oh yeah, the light is on. Lopez, how, for example, in your company, the owner of this guy is is obsessive OCD with oh yeah with the with the organization of the wires. He he visit the boat when you finish and he say no remove everything. Wow, I no remove everything because this cable is like this and not like this. Wow, and because this screw is like this. That's yeah, man, like he's 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 like. They're seriously like OCD with that. Like both of them, Alan and, and Nicholas. Like Nicholas is the, the son. The father and the son. The father and the son. Like they're like so picky with everything because they're just they just they just high end. Like they just like to do everything like so deep, just high like, end. It's, you it's, have to put like it's, everything. This listen. If you're gonna do something, you do it right. Yeah. You're gonna make do wiring, make it look right. You know, some people are a little more extreme than others, but it's just it's art. You're rep those people. You're representing those people. And whether you screw it up, it reflects on them. That's why they want it. But uh, that guy, the, the, the owner of that company, always, always, when finish a job in any marina, the rest of the contractors and the manager of the marina gave to, to him more contracts. Oh, nice installation. What, no? Every, all the people pass. Oh, wow. Who installed that? Mabru. Who? Oh, nice. It's, and the guy touched the... the, the the, no, that screw is not good. Remove that. Uh, that hose clamp is not marine. It, uh, it's crazy. It's crazy. But the details, my friend, the details. This business is the. All the people is like him, rich people. <laughs> rich people. He's he, he just like a carpenter. The carpenter does a shitty job. Oh, you can see it. It's the same thing as doing wiring or rigging or whatever. It has to be uniform and nice. For yourself. Unless you like shabby shit on your yeah. boat, you know, but I mean, for the most part, you yeah. want to look nice and clean and organized. It looks like, man, it's professionally done. Because that's what you guys are trying to be professional mechanics, right? Uh, don't forget so that be professional. The, those boats are the toy of the, of the opera. You admit a Mickey Mouse job? No. Probably him, probably, but the wife <laughs> of him, <laughs> ah, yes, <laughs> No. no, but when you have a problem later as the owner, no. that's when you realize the last guy should have done it. Yeah. Yeah. And then you'll never ask him. Even if that guy oh, yeah. got fixed, you'll never bring him back because he did a shitty job last time. Or like the wiring looks horrible or whatever. Even if, especially if you're an owner and you don't even understand anything about wiring, if it just visually isn't appealing, you're not going to hire that person again. Right. Even though maybe it's perfectly safe and fine, but it looks horrible. But, yeah. but it's just not and also, my friend, too much people ask me and Danny every Oh, I want to be in the future dealer of Mercury, dealer of Yamaha, dealer. Okay, you want to be a dealer? You need to be professional. Because of the, the dealer, when, when the people try to buy the engines or the equipment directly on the dealer, the dealer recommends companies. The dealer say, oh, real local is good. Or that company is Kaka. That company. <laughs> and they recommend the companies according with the experience of the dealer. Yeah? No, I want to be a dealer, puppy. If you want to be a dealer, you need to sell some amount of uh, units per month, per year. And additionally, the quality of your installation should be perfect. No, no, no good. Perfect. No, no. Remember, as a dealer, I represent Evan and I represent Merck. And that's a big company. If I start doing shitty work, I'll put my dealership. They don't want that because then that reflects on them. Like you guys reflect on the people who you work for and the people who you work for represent Mercury. It's that type of deal. That's why it's important that everything is uniform. Because if you do something wrong in the rigging, guess what? That's the marina's responsibility. Mercury's not gonna pay for it. Everyone's not gonna pay for it. Yama, no one's gonna pay for it. So, because you're supposed to be trained. Because not only when you're a dealer, you have to have trained technicians, certified technicians. I'm a certified technician. Suzuki, Outdated now, Mercury, Evan. If 
you are not sure that uh, that installation is okay, it's because it's not okay. If you if you think ah oh, the opener tomorrow probably oh yeah the opener tomorrow probably will ask to me about that. Okay, remove remove that element right now because tomorrow the opener asks to you. My friend, I don't know about that. In not any in mega jazz, the secret is the quality. If you enter in a mega jazz and if you say, oh wow, this is like a hotel, mm -hmm. no, like a like a hospital, everything is clean. You enter in the engine room and you say, wow, this is the engine room, looks like a hospital. Yes, my friend. You think that you can install a bilge pump like this in that beautiful uh, engine room? You think that you can pass one cable externally hanging in that wonderful engine room? No, you need to follow follow the same the same the same recommendation than the original. This is rigging. Rigging is not the the dimension. This is part of the rigging, but rigging is quality. Believe me, rigging is excellent. And uh, this is the difference between you and other Mickey Mouse technicians. This is the difference between you and Hialeah technicians. How many people you find in a, in a Opaloka in Hialeah that remove the head of the engine and replace the gasket? A lot, a lot. Remove the head and replace the gasket is ridiculous, it's stupid. But the quality of this job, that, that's the difference. That's the difference. When you protect the boat with plastic, when you, when you cover you, you you are protected your hands are clean the customer is happy when when the customer see contractors that are protect the boat that's the difference I, I i i work hard 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 because in the future or not lopez and, and what he was saying protecting the boat absolutely especially if it has teeth oh yeah that's teeth damage that tick, boy. Yeah, a little, little You're definitely going to be fired. Drain oil and on the tick. And the company is going to have to pay big money because they're not going to just fix that little piece. They're going to replace the whole thing. No. Drain a little. Use oil on the tick. Yeah. Yeah. Finito. The tick absorbs that black oil. Same thing with power steering. I mean, uh, hydraulic steering. Like you're doing yeah. Bleeding. You should always have a oil absorbing rags. Especially with his teeth. Fiberglass is the way you can clean it up. And the teeth and stuff like that. The or like and that, the carpet. The carpet or the uh, uh, sea deck. Yeah. Even though sea deck supposedly doesn't absorb, but trust me, it does. Sea deck is that artificial teeth, right? Yeah, it's artificial. It's like a foam. It's nice on your feet. Plastic. They suck when you have to take them off. Yes, my friend. This is the, the introduction to this class today. It's the quality. Uh, you, you, right now, you know about electricity, installation of batteries. And everything we recommend more and more every day that you be professional, 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 clean. Buy the appropriate tools, my friend. Please, I don't want to see you with the with the adjustable wrench removing box. I don't want to see you with vice grips, with vice grips, with channel. Damage <coughs> you damage the head of the box. And you scar. It. Now you, 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 you may not damage the, the bolt, but you also you can see that. It, Someone didn't use the right tool. As a as a mechanic, I can see someone didn't use the right tool. Someone used vice grips. You can see where they've been grinding and trying to get to do it. Now sometimes you may need to because you're adding heat, you use it, but you're going to replace that bolt anyways. If you don't have the appropriate socket to remove the bolt, stop, go to Napa, buy the tools, and come back. No, it's a little loose. It's a little loose. It's not the it's not the socket, and you damage the head. No, that, that head is too... i never seen that head, but I have a similar, no. If it's similar, it's not. It should be exactly... Ask to other technicians. Hey, my friend, what, is, what type of... Oh, that head is European head. This is the song. Oh, that's... You see, for example, in that engine that those guys destroyed, there are a lot of bolts that right now I found them on the ground because they never asked to Danny for the tool. Yeah? Today I am frustrated when I see that. Yeah, that group, you, they're going to go finish that for All right. I'm going to do any yes things to finish And uh, I hope that in the future you'll be professional. Right? You you represent Danny. Let, let me tell you, I, I'm going to use that motor as an example. I would throw 
time. And like I said, with me, they're not going to do any gasoline until that diesel's perfect. I know that was in your group. You guys will start on the gasoline. They're going to be finishing. I have, a, I have one generator. Do you remember the, the control box that I used with the relays the store the start stop in the class? Mm -hmm. That was a, a new generator, Danny. That I, I, I was working with my group 20 years ago. We say to him, hey, my friend, we need that you remove the harness carefully in that engine because we are going to replace the harness. And that guy cut all the cables, all the cables close to the relay, close to the switch, close to the sensor. The sensor, no, no cables out to repair the sensor in the future. He cut it with cutter wires, everything. Hey, my friend, how can you be? You, you are really stupid. It happened to me too, my shop. I had a guy, I told him. Oh, really? Said, yeah, because I pulled an engine out of the boat. I said, let's just strip it. The block was no good. I said, let's strip the wiring harness. Let's take everything off and set it aside. And, it and I said, take the wiring harness. And I said, all the ground bolts were there and it looked like ch -ch 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 all the way around. I wanted to kill him. So what the hell am I going to do with that harness now? The harness is no good. That's that's common sense. That's it really is. not even... That, that's common sense. It's just common sense. I mean, if you see a bolt that's got like five rounds, why would you cut all five wires if you could just take the bolt out and it comes out as one piece? And why, if you have the sensor here with the cables, you cut the cables exactly. close to the sensor? Can you repair that cable? No, my friend, is stupid. How you do that? No? All right. You are the future of this business, my friend. We hope you'll be professional. Yeah. Think. Think before you do things. Yeah. Look at things. And, and by you tools. guys have the by ability tools. now to look at something and kind of like do analysis compared with you guys when you first started the class. So you just got to look at things and say, okay, well, you know, this. all right, let me look at that. Before I tear an engine apart, I'm always looking. I'll take pictures and just make sure, you know, because I don't work on the same motor every time. So I work on different motors. So sometimes I had to take pictures. And Danny, how many tools do you have that you use once per year? I got, I got uh, the specialty tools I yeah. use is like, you know, for the rebuilding lower units. But you need stuff. those tools. You need them. You need those tools. To oh, carry. yeah, I remember. To remove that socket in that engine, that uh, ball or whatever, I have the tool. This is a tool that I have in my truck, and I use twice per year. Or the one for once the, per year. the carrier? Yeah, yeah, some carrier, specific, correct. Shimming tools, dialing But if you don't have that tool, you destroy the housing. Right. No, Danny? No. You need buy tools. Every, every week, more tools. Oh, I need a special a small a screwdriver. Buy a small a screwdriver. Because in this type of a unit, you need that a small a screwdriver. Just like a doctor. The doctor has specific tools yeah. for specific things. They may not do the same surgery every time, but they, do, they have. Mm -hmm. In some the cases, you need, you need fabricate the tools. Oh, yeah, you need fine. bend it, you need to uh, cut it and, and welding in, in a different position because this is special for that angle in that specific unit. I, I use only in Hatteras. Okay, my friends. Organize your tools in bags, sockets, metric, a standard, a screwdriver, just in different bags. Organize it. You enter in a boat, you put all your tools, organize it, you put your blanket and you start organizing. Now with the tools, that's, that's, that's your first impression in the boat. Other, other contractor pass around, if, if other contractor pass around your job and say, oh wow, nice job, nice organization. The light, the plus light, the computer, everything organized. That's completely different, yeah. if believe going, me. If you go in there with a bucket full of tools, they're gonna look at you fine. Oh no. With a, with or, a, or a bag that you open your tool bag and all the sockets are just like, <laughs> On your tool, I can't have that. And the only hammer that that guy has is a carpenter hammer. Don't <laughs> wow. yeah, uh, use a carpenter hammer. That's your carpenter. Yeah. Okay. Uh, rigging, no, Danny, today. Yeah, the rigging with the other classes. I'm going to be going over the rigging. They're going to do now with the through halls. Uh, after that. No, but right now uh, we, we can start with the rigging. Okay. With your rigging. Uh, so the rigging, all right, so control boxes. Name a few different style control boxes. They're available. There you go. Cable yeah. shift. Huh? Cable shift. Cable shift and what else? Digital shift. And digital shift. Okay. 
and, and now how many different styles of control box that are cable and digital? You have the side Three. mount. Side mount. Yeah, okay, the so the side mount. Same so time. a side mount it could be like like this. Okay. A sealed side mount. <laughs> This is what they call a concealed side mount, right? So basically, this is behind the the, the, boat, the side of the boat on the inside, and so you can drive from the side. Now you have the side mount box. It's like a box style that has this outside. So the, you don't see, the, you don't see this. It's just a box completely that is a side. That's a surface side mount. This is called a concealed side mount. Concealed because all you see is this, okay? And then you have top mount. Top mount is gonna be something similar to that and what he has in his hand as well. What is this? Do you remember that terminal? Uh, the, NEMA. Yeah. the NEMA connector, you remember? Yeah. This one is connected directly into the, uh, into the backbone. backbone. And now the control is integrated with the system. And I'll go some more detail on that. But also you have top mounts that have one for throttle and one for shift. Just like that one, that's a Morse control, control box. Now the Morse control box in these styles are 33C cables. 33C cables is a cable that's just like this, but it doesn't have these ends. It's just a thread with nuts. You add the adapters, Yamaha, Suzuki, Honda, Tahatsu, even some Yamahas. Yeah, the most Yamahas have it. The ones who don't have that as much is you can use, the, this is a Mercury version, and then you have the Emery version that you guys probably seen in the video. Now, here's the deal. 33C cable is probably most commonly used for those, those uh, uh, Japanese motors and uh, diesels and stuff like that. On the Merc Cruiser, they'll have that style, that cable, and also the Mercury outboards. And then we will have the same thing. And you can make an adjustments. Now, those 33C cables, put those pieces in and they have these little inserts. I have to find some, I'll find some at the shop. That you put it in as like a barrel, but it has three slots and it has like a like almost like a copper, uh, not, not a copper, like a brass, like a U, U shape, so it locks it in place because every motor has its own its own adjustments. Okay. So when you when you when you're picking the cable, obviously the rule of thumb roughly for me it's been pretty accurate. I would say 90% accurate. However long so the boat's 30 feet long take three feet away and that's how long you need cables for so if it's 30 foot then i need 27 foot cables if it's 15 foot i need 12 foot cables okay now it doesn't always work out that way but i have pretty much yeah, a 90 percent success that? why you need less uh well because the, your console unless your console is all the way in the front your console is a midship and you say, why only three feet if the console's in the middle of the ship? For example, well, that's the console and the engine is here. Right. Lovely. So then, so what happens is you have the cables. Okay, so now the cable's going up to the console. Going down, depending on where it's routed, then it's going to come back up again, come to the side to the motor if it's a single motor or if it's a twin motor. So that's why I normally it's about three feet. Sometimes it's more or less. The best thing is if the boat's already been rigged, you're always better on looking at the cables to tell you what size cables they are. Okay, uh, and now when they're uh, like, if it says 17 feet, try to stay with 17 feet. Like uh, yesterday, we ordered cables that were uh, four feet longer because the guy wants to put uh, a swim platform bracket with an engine. So he's not ready to do it yet, but he had to replace the cables. So he's just had me add four feet, and we'll just coil them up. Nani, what uh, happens when you have excess of white of cables like this? If you have too much cable, what happens is then you tend to roll them up or they get they get caught up it looks like crap but at the most part if you have too many bends the cable is restricted okay so the, you want to usually try to get it you usually want about I, I would say at least 12 I would say 12 to 18 like a loop a little loop so that way when the when the motor turns the loop kind of moves with it but nicely you don't want to have a big massive loop. so it's kind of you have to look at that uh, I wish we had a boat here to do that, but maybe what we might do is one day at the shop, mm -hmm. just come to the shop and just 
Look at all show, the different okay. rigs I have there. Uh, and so, but the excess excess of a scalpel is not good. Not good. You always want to keep it precise because then you have where you're going to hide all that. And then sometimes you don't have places to hide those cables. So. And other secret is try to enter in the unit straight, no in angle, no. No, no, straight. yeah, yeah. When you when you when you come into the motor, you you want it to come like this. That's why there's a loop. The loop like this, and you go right into the motor. You want a little loop. So as the motor turns, the loop gets smaller, and then it gets wider, going in the opposite direction. Because if you have it just coming right around, what happens? You have too much of a bend. And it'll end up failing the, the cable. It might not fail right away, but it'll be stiff. So it'll cause problems. And so you want to make sure that you have the loop and you have an easy, even sweep. Now with the rigging tube, sometimes you don't have it, but then that's why the rigging tubes are usually longer than what it should be. So it's kind of draped over, depending on what you have. Danny, when you have a customer that, that complains that uh, the cable is hard, it's hard. For example, the starboard cable is hard in comparison to the front cable. Uh, what is the procedure? So, first thing you want to do is you want to isolate, right? Is the problem in the motor, or is the problem in the control box, or is the problem in the cable? So, if in a case like that, I would, if, let's just say it's a shift problem, and it's that stiff and everything else is loose, I would go to the motor, disconnect the shift cable, and shift it by hand. If I can't move it by hand, the problem is in the motor. Hey, it shifts very easily. Okay, now you have to do is more likely the control box. You take the control box off and you take the cable that's bad and you try to move it by hand. If you can't move it by hand, replace the cable. If it moves freely, problems in the control box. They get corroded a lot. Yeah, yeah they get corroded. Yeah, Those cables yeah. usually. But the thing is, is, it makes no sense to go start tearing a control box and cables apart if you don't check the problems in the motor because you have the shift shafts have bushings in them. And over a period of time, salt water gets in there, and the water will evaporate, and the salt will crystallize and start binding on the. Uh, if that the, shift cable or the control cable is not moving freely when you have it, um, the cable. It's the, the cable. cable. Can you like put some grease nope. in there? Uh, uh, no. The cable's no. completely nope. shot, right? No. Nope. It's a temporary solution. If you are in Bahamas and you. Well, yeah. If you're in the Bahamas and trying to get back home, right, yeah. Right try to lubricate, but uh, it's. it's no. uh, well, the problem is, is the, the, there's a there's a stainless steel cable in the middle of it, and there's steel cables all the way around it, embedded in this uh, in this uh, housing on the outside. And what happens is uh, the, the the metal when it gets water it starts swelling, and what happens is once it starts swelling, it starts binding on that cable. Any boat that sinks, you have to change to change the cables. There is no not changing cables or anything like that. Right, you have to change the cables underwater. That cable is no good. Yeah, once it's underwater, it's no good. Even if it does work, it's not going to last very long. It's not going to last long because what happens is salt builds up in there and it restricts yeah. The, yeah. the shifting. Follow follow the cables and verify if the cable is touching the water. Right. So you said if, if, if you take it off the motor and you can move it free, it's a problem with the motor. Yeah, when I say freely, like, yeah. easy. And you're going, no, 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 you move it free. No. Those 33C cables, they usually the move, like, when they're new, they usually oh. move pretty easy. Oh, yeah. Everything can move. Let me have a question. They're, like, free. If you have, like, an excess of cable, like, there's no way that you can just try to, like, you can the ends, like, be cut, or everything has to be always custom. Everything is prefab. No, uh, Lopez, those, those cables are fabricated, uh, it's, it's impossible to replace. When you cut it, Immediately, the, the stainless steel is uh, no, that's no. Yeah. There is no it's cut. a factory it's process that we that you cannot, you yeah. have to order the right yeah. cable. Yeah. That's why it's always good to have the old cable. So, now let me ask you this as we're talking about rigging. Okay, so now you're, you're gonna rig a new boat. So, we're going to control box. So, you have to look what kind of control boxes you have. Oh, he's got a top mount, all right, or a side mount. So, okay, we got a side mount, all right, so you got that. So before we move on any further, you pull the, you pull the, you, you check to see what size cables from the old engine, and you see the numbers. Let's just say it's 17 foot. So 17 foot. So when you take this out, would you take everything out—the control box, the cables, and everything? No, no, no. Why? I run the new one. Yes, you run the new ones because it'll be a bitch <laughs> to run those cables if you don't have something to pull it with. So what I normally do is I'll take the ends on the cable and I'll cut them and I'll electrical tape them. If it's going to be a tight fit, I usually get cardboard and make a cone in front of it and just put a shitload of grease. And that way it's easy. One pulls, 
one pushes, get stuck, the other guy pulls, and the opposite guy pushes until you can get right, it through. Let's sell a uh, wire lube. You use like wire, wire lube? lube? Yeah. You I can use any lube, soap, you can use soapy soap, water. Yeah, that's right. Use the only problem, I don't use soapy water only because the tape will come, yeah. Yeah, come yeah. undone. That's, that's what happens. But so then, so then once you run that cable, you obviously use the old cable. Now, now you have a wiring harness. So I wouldn't pull both cables out. You take one for your control cables, and then you can use the other one for whatever battery cables, whatever. And you can loop it because once you start pulling this out, sometimes I take that same loop, I'm pulling it out, and I'm already grabbing to the other one so I can keep pulling. And it depends. It depends on the situation. Depends on, on what you're trying to do. So once you get that control box in, now you have different hole patterns for control boxes. And this happens to me a lot because I convert people from different motors to another motor. And the, and the pattern for the control box is different. So you can either get option A, pay some fiberglass guy to fill in the hole and make it look unique, or you make a plate, an adapter plate, which they sell. So it fills in the old holes. So it looks uniform. It's starboard. It doesn't look original, but it's, you know, the customer doesn't have to spend three, four hundred dollars for someone to patch a hole. Okay? And that's how you sell it off. The adapter plate's like 30 bucks. 30 so, bucks, 400 bucks. So when you pull using the old cable, do you find that it's easier to pull from the control box or from the engine side? Depends. Depends. Well, I'm going to tell you this. In this scenario, the only way to pull this is from the back to the front. Because look, imagine all this shit getting caught on the yeah, wires. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the other, third, the other end is just like a, a, it's just a point, and it has a little barrel, but not like this. Same thing with the oven roof. It's always from the back to the front. 33C cable, it doesn't matter. It can go from the front to the back because it has no, yeah. no, no, uh, no it's adapters. Same ends. Huh? It's the same ends. It's the same ends. Full cable is alignment. Yeah, I had to do that on right. the 33C cable. Right, 33C cable. Yeah. That's exactly the one with the barrels. Yeah. Right. Kept the old one in, and then I used that for like some duct tape around it. To and you should always, and you should always, especially on a new rig, because if you do a good job, the customer is going to come back to you. So you're always better off to run either a dummy wire or a string. I rather I rather run wire, and you can use that as a pull cord for the future for you. Yeah. You're not doing it for the customer. You're doing it for you. Yeah. Because if you don't have nothing to pull through, then you got to run a fish tape, and then you and God knows how many freaking tie wraps are in the in the system. So you know it's kind of one of those deals. Okay. So that you just got to make sure. So when you, and then also when you're doing your rigging. Let's just say it's a brand new boat, you're going to rig a brand new boat. You have to measure and check that you put the control box not like right up against it or if there's a if there's a dash here that if you give full throttle it doesn't hit. Now be careful with this. Uh, when, when you install new elements in the console, ask to the captain, ask to the owner. Because for example, me, my hands are, for me it's not a problem here, but uh, I call the captain. Danny, Danny is bigger than me. Oh, that's not good. That installation is not, I, I prefer here or here because, yeah. I see to the, yeah. To the I've seen people rig the, con the, the control box so close when you're holding your hand, you turn the wheel, it hits your knuckles. Uh, yeah. 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 Be, be, be careful, my friends, when you make a hole in the console. Yeah, once you make oh, a hole, friend, you're committed ask to that hole. 20 times to the, to the customer to add, make a video and send a video to the customer or the captain. Captain, look, this is the position you mark with blue tape. It's okay for you? Oh, let me check. Okay, think and call to me later. And ask to other contractors, hey, my friend, what do you think about the radio here? Oh, that's not good. Other people have other opinions. You know what the best way to do it? I take that blue tape on a new console and I take the whole console and I draw. Yeah. And I measure. So. On the, the, uh, remember the hydrosport I had torn apart over there? Well, we finally get it almost, today should be almost done fully rigged in the whole nine yards. So before we put the, because Alvin filled all the holes, we took we took the tape and we made our line. I centered the, the ignition switch to the center of this, the control box to the center of this with the right space. I did that with blue tape first, and you can look at it before you make holes. You gotta measure everything out. It's not like, oh, okay, I'm gonna put it here. Ah, uh, let's just put it here. Control box here, steering wheel here, ignition over there. Oh no, the customer say that this is not good. Okay, I'm going to, oh, oh what happened with the hole? And what also, happened with the hole is Yelko, is Tika, 
is is wood with varnish. And you have to ask the customer when you draw it out. So this is what you want. This is how it's gonna lay out. Oh yeah, that's perfect. Okay, then you do it. Some people don't care. Just do it what you think's best. Well, make everything uniform. You want to look nice. You don't want you don't you don't want to look. I mean, the guy's holding that steering wheel most of the time while he's driving. It looks like shit. It's gonna. He's not gonna be happy. You also have to be very careful what's on the other side. Of yeah. You can't oh just yeah. Put something oh, and drill yeah. a hole. And yeah. just like a cable. Or Anytime you drill a hole, you should always look. Yeah. So the hatters I was doing, he, was, he wanted the underwater lights, but in a certain precision. But when I looked on the inside, the stringers were there. I'm like, yeah. you can't put it there. No, I remember absolutely. one helper, uh, my helper, perforated the fuel tank one day. Oh, nice. Doing a true hole to pass it. The fuel tank. Oh. This one. Yeah, that's not a fun deal. So Be careful with the console. No, excuse me, Danny. But the console is the, the most sophisticated part of the boat. What is the, the when you when you enter in a dealer to buy a car? What is the first element that you check? You open the door. Oh, the console. Nice yeah, console. console. That's the first element. Because you you check the console. Each each. Yeah, that's where you're always at. Yeah, the console is the most important part. Protect the console. Ask to the customer. Ask to the captain. Call to Captain, can you visit the boat tomorrow? I need that you check where I am going to do the hole for the switch. It's a single switch. Okay, call to him. Because when the captain arrived, oh, why you put the switch over there? I don't like. You say to me, I send the picture. Be careful with it. I don't know, but I think yeah. that this is critical. And you have to be smart. Like, like some, some boats will get the ignition switch to be right here. But when you're driving and you're hitting waves, yeah. people bust yeah. the keys all the time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 and the switches, the the rocker switches, yeah, the bilge pump. Somebody yeah, would not. You should never it. have anything here. Everything should be up on. Top. I was where I was the exactly. hatch I'm working on. <laughs> there's a guy uh, in, in the, into the engine room. There's a switch for the bilge pump, and uh, I guess they didn't know, and they they bumped into it, and for like 30 minutes they're like running around, like, what are you guys looking for? He's like, oh. The bilge pump won't turn off. Like I can't figure out how to turn off. Where's the breaker for it? I'm like, just turn off the switch. Yeah. They're like, oh, yeah. I didn't know I was there. So uh, yeah, you gotta do your research on your boat before you do it. <laughs> now there are there are switches that they make that is kind of like it's counter sunk in and it has like a groove, but they're toggle switches. I use that for uh, a couple of boats that I built uh, just because it was a tiller model and and I had the switch here and I knew if he would hit his leg. But that one, you actually have to stick your finger in there and move. So yeah. there's, different, there's different switches for different applications. Yeah. With, the, with the time when the boat is all and all, uh, and uh, the systems are all systems. For example, the water maker. The water maker in this boat, Sahateras, is integrated with the NEMA. I can start the water maker here in the spring. But uh, for some reason, the water maker right now only starts directly on the equipment. And the customer said, okay, put it in the console a switch for what I make. Are you sure? In the console, you want that switch? Yeah, yeah, yeah. on the side of the, no, my friend. Be careful with that. Recommend to the customer that this is not professional. This is not good. That's why they don't have a generator. Turn on your generator from the, from the panel. But usually a panel you have to go to specifically do it. Okay. If someone accidentally get hit it. Guy has a kid. Oh, it's good, dad. It's, what, what does this do? He doesn't tell his old man. The water. Meanwhile, he's trying to make water while he's going driving to the Bahamas. See how long that pump lasts. You know, stuff like that. So, going back to the control box. Now, does there anybody know what this is? It's a kill switch. I call it the dead man switch. When you fall out the boat, you're supposedly, technically, you're supposed to have it hooked to you. It'll shut it off. Can, can, can you repeat that? The kill switch. Kill switch. It's a federal kill law. Switch. Papi. It's law. Well, Papi. No kill. Ever, yeah, no kill. <laughs> kill. The relay. Kill. The run relay. relay. You kill. You remember? Mm -hmm. You remember the sensor, oil pressure, and temperature sensor? And this one. They are. They are. And fire suppression. And fire suppression. Right. Interrupt. 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 Purple cable. Purple cable. Ignition cable. You, you know? You remember that? So, and then you have different trim and tilts. Like this one's a single engine, but you have for twin engine. But there is no such thing as a concealed side mount dual. Now they do have, they did, out of back in the day, they had one control box that had 
there was a surface mount control box that had two handles on it. But you don't see that very often. You probably won't see that anymore. But it's important that you understand that you have different control boxes. Like Mercury has a control box that has it trims and then it stops. And then you have to hit a trailer button for it to make the drive go all the way up. Because if you eliminate that, and a lot of, a lot of people eliminate it, and if you eliminate it and the guy doesn't pay attention and he keeps trimming, trimming, he can, he can wipe out the U-joints on, uh, oh, yeah. on, the, on the drive. That's why it's called the trim limit switch. And that's on the actual housing on the outside next to the to the steering is so that when it pivots it can right, it's just a reading for it to know when not to trim up anymore okay also with uh now this is pretty much the cable any questions on the cable because i want to go into digital now we good with the cable no more question on the cable everybody sure, understands sure, sure. uh, uh danny uh, about the morse cables the morse yeah. cables yeah we'll give you the, Mor the morse cables this one here you can see you this. see the, you see the yeah the throttle and then you have the shift in the back. You see the throttle? Okay, can, can you refresh me one thing, guys? In diesel, you remember that uh, we don't have a throttle body, no? Mm -hmm. It's only in gasoline. Uh, what is that element that is moving here with the throttle? The fuel pump. Uh, it's, it's basically the governor of the fuel injection pump. In this particular case, the governor is electronic. It's electronic. Everybody follow me? And this is with cable. This is with cable. This is the Morse cable. Morse cable. And uh, it's mechanical cable, no, yeah. Danny? This has been around probably longer than I've been around. Morse cables, the Morse control box has been around. That was before yeah. they even had all those fancy. Uh, yeah, because the new ones is uh, like uh, the other ones that you want right. to explain right now, no? Right. That one. Right. Uh, okay, so now let me explain something about the digital. The digital is nice because there's no cables to be run. Everything is run through a public and private network. What is okay. the purpose of the public network? Yeah, you hear that? Public and private network. Public communities with the, the system and the whole computer. Correct. Correct. So the name, the name of the public network is where you get all your engine information on the gauges, or on your Lorance, or on your whatever whatever depth sounder or, or fish finder you have, or GPS. In the private network, what's the private network used for? Just for the engine. Just for the engine. It's basically just for that particular manufacturer. So the nice thing about these ones are I can hook up a computer and read the read the information on here, okay? And know if there's a fault on here, because you can have faults on the engine and you can have faults on the control head. So it's important when you have a mechanical problem, which I gotta go back to Belize, because uh -huh. his control box just took uh -huh. a crap, but I gotta go back to Belize. Uh, basically, you gotta hook up the computer and see is the problem in the motor? I have no fault on the motor, but yet an alarm is going off, so then you hook up to your computer, you hook up to this part, and read this part, okay? And say, oh, I got a fault, you know, shift malfunction, or sensor below, sensor. remember, this is all voltage. The, the, the number one issue with these is voltage. Digital has, you cannot have any loose grounds, bad wires, because if you do, you're gonna have a problem. And when you're installing these, and this happens a lot, Make sure you don't bend the pins. You bend the pins, you will fry. Because I have a, a customer from a from a, 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 a marine place that I'm friends with. I'm staying out of it, but a customer came to me and he bent the pins and fried the control box. Now he has to pay seventeen hundred dollars for a control box. I told him to go back to him, and he doesn't want to go back to him. Just like I was said, once you piss off a customer, you think he's going to give you another opportunity to screw it up some more. Even though you want to fix it, because you already gave a bad taste, you know? So it's just kind of like one of those deals. So this one here, this one has, there's different options. This one has the lights, the indicator lights. Hey, forward, neutral, and reverse. And in this one here, you can, like when you're, you're trolling, you can bump up the RPMs. You can hit neutral. Mercury has same options as well on that. So this That's just nice. looks different, okay? The majority of the new boats are coming with Yeah, this. most of them are going to be off by now. So, but from a reliability perspective, cable is the way. Much better, right? Cable is the most reliable way. You cannot screw that, up cable. Does that have a power cable? Yep, it has a power. It feeds through the Neiman network. <laughs> so, like, but 
It's the also a matter of uh, from the production, like it's no. fa easier, faster, you can have it over runs, that's why it's easier. Sure. It's easier to it's rig, easier, right? A digital that's control, that's why they do that on the new boats. Yes. It's got three and it's more like just Less, like it's visually appealing, appealing you don't change and you change your cell right? Yeah, you, all you have is a new one. You, you eliminate cables. Yeah, you eliminate cables so you and don't have that stiffness in you. I mean, maybe yeah. it gets a Now, the only thing is, okay, so here's here's the funny part. Because you don't have cables, well, what if that engine, the shift linkage is binding up? So it'll give me a shift malfunction on my on my gauge. And then if the shift malfunction, you need to go there, do the same test that you did cables. Hey, is it free? But it's got servos. So you have to actually, it's a little bit more of a pain in the butt to, get, to disconnect that. You have to take the side shafts, disconnect the servo from the shift linkage, and try to shift the linkage by right hand. So those servos are back right next to the engine, basically? And then there's a Two of them. Cable. One for the throttle, yeah. one there, I, I and it's just a, hard, yeah. just a, bat, a network cable going to it. And then there's a tiny little cable between the servo and the engine itself, or how does it go? No, it's basically? going right directly to the linkage of the oh, rod. Oh, okay. So what happens is, if there's any binding against those servos, the servos are going to shoot off the half code because it's only, it's only supposed to have so much resistance. If it has too much resistance, it'll, the, the lights will start flashing on the, on the control box.